Today I'm going to show you why knowing your purpose in life is key to achieving your goals. And what does it mean to know your purpose? And what does it have to do with your goals? We're going to get into all of that coming up. Welcome to the power of quiet. If you're looking for an easy and reliable way to quiet your compulsive thinking, so you can be more present, more peaceful, more happy, and in turn, be more successful in your life, then click subscribe because every single video that we put here shows you exactly how to do that. Now today, I want to highlight something that is an absolute must when it comes to successfully achieving your goals. Now, if you are only focus on the outcome of your goal. That's the only thing that's important to you. So if your goal is to say, have a million dollars and you're just only focused on getting that money, where's the money? Give me the money. You're going to miss out not only on discovering your true self, you're going to miss out on connecting with your true purpose. Now your purpose is a reason for your existence. It implies that simply because you exist, there must be a reason for that. And unlike a goal, your purpose isn't something that you can choose, isn't something that can be given or forced upon you, it just is. So your purpose is deeply connected with your beingness, your very existence. So the goals you work towards must always be based in finding your purpose. If not, even if you get those goals, you'll never be satisfied. You'll just have a fleeting sense of accomplishment and find yourself quickly off searching for something more. Goals without a purpose are fruitless and unfulfilling. And that's why you probably find yourself time to time subconsciously rejecting your goals like when you have resistance to working on them, or you find yourself procrastinating, or just thinking about your goal, you're just feeling Ugh, so heavy. Now, I see this time and again, when people call up asking for help working on their goals, and they're frustrated. They say, I've been working on this goal for a long, long time, and I'm still not getting it. And they're feeling like releasing isn't working. They're feeling disillusioned and they're feeling like a victim, like life instead of happening for them. Life is something that's just happening to them. They have no control over it. Now, when we dig a little bit deeper, we see that there's actually a different story going on. Now, sure, they may not be getting that particular goal, but because of releasing, their life is getting better. They're feeling happier. They're feeling more positive, more confident, more secure about themselves. They're seeing real changes in their mood and behavior. And they're seeing all sorts of little gains popping up all over the place. And this shows that life is still happening. The purpose is still there. And it's the releasing that's opening up the door to that purpose. But instead of fully embracing the purpose, they're just kind of dipping their toe in. So you must put your purpose before your goals. And here's a great thing that happens when you do. You see, life has a way of knocking you around from time to time. I mean, just look at what's going on right now. Now, when you don't have a purpose and you get knocked down, what happens? You get discouraged, disillusioned. You even feel like giving up. But if you're connected with your purpose, if you get knocked down, so what? You don't stay down. Your purpose pulls you through the situation quickly. Primarily because instead of valuing yourself based on the outcome of your goal, you're valuing what it is that you're uncovering as you rise up to meet your goal. And you also start acting like a master where you're coming from a position of imperturbability, a place where no one and nothing can bother you. That's powerful. That's where a master comes from. And you also set your ego aside. 
So instead of coming from a place of taking, like, what's in it for me? Instead, you just find yourself coming from a place of love, of true givingness. And this is a powerful position because when you're coming from real givingness, without any strings attached, whatever it is that you give out comes back to you tenfold. Now I'm going to show you how you can start finding your purpose and using it back to leverage getting your goals so you could feel on top of them and you see them all the way through. But first, if right now you're feeling that life is taking a disorientating twist lately and you're starting to question, what am I doing with my life? I invite you to join me on the upcoming six-week course called Living Your True Purpose. This is a course on freedom, a true course on mastership that's going to get you looking for all your happiness and power where it is rather than where it isn't. And by the way, you'll never be satisfied until you come from this place, until you step up and finally be the master that you are. So I'll put a link to it up here and also in the description below. Check it out. It's happening soon. Now, onto your purpose. How do you know what your purpose is? How do you find it? Do you know? Or are you in doubt about it? Now, even if you think you know, you see, a lot of times we take it into our mind as information. But information is not the real thing. It's like writing the word honey on a piece of paper and expecting to lick it and taste honey. No. You see, if you want to know the sweetness of honey, you taste the honey. You don't just store the information in your mind. That's meaningless. And that's the same thing that's true about whatever you know about your purpose. It doesn't come from your mind. So if you're thinking about it, that's no good. So see if you're in your mind trying to figure out what that purpose is. You think you know all about it. The question is, are you in it? Are you experiencing it? Now see if your mind really knows about it. It doesn't, does it? It thinks it does. And in fact, as much as it thinks it does, it doesn't want you to find your purpose. Because if you're coming from your purpose, you don't need your mind. And it's threatened by that. So it's going to do everything to confuse you, to say, oh, no, no, I got it all figured out for you. Trust me. Right? But it doesn't. It just leads you astray. So right now, could you let go of looking into your mind for your purpose? Let go of looking into your memories, your thoughts, whatever you know about it. Let all that information go. Just set it aside just for this moment. And take a look at what's really going on. Are you feeling totally confident and satisfied with yourself? Like positive and happy all the time? If not, then sometimes you're feeling down on yourself, right? You get frustrated with yourself, or you even find yourself plain small, not daring to think big, not reaching out, not really stepping up and demonstrating how much power you have. Are you? Now, let me ask you this. If you're doubting yourself, question yourself, and sometimes being critical and hard on yourself. I mean, after all, who doesn't get that way sometimes? When you do that to yourself, how does that help you? Does that create any positive results being hard on yourself? I know some of us think we do. We think that we motivate ourselves or we push ourselves. You know, we drive ourselves to succeed. But that's no fun. Now, if you are, You'll notice it really doesn't help you. And let me ask you this. Who's being critical and hard on yourself? Who's holding yourself down? It's not the world. If you want to blame the world, the world's doing it to you. Good luck with that. 
You're always going to feel powerless. But right now, I'm pointing your attention back upon you. Who are you? See, who's the one here that's watching the whole show? And it is your show. It doesn't belong to anybody else but you. And your mind, it belongs to you. It's talking to no one else but you. So you are the owner. You're the owner of your mind. You're the owner of your reality. And look at how you're treating it. Look at what you're doing to yourself if you're being critical on yourself. You're doing that. Now, if you're doing that, do you really want to keep doing that? Or would you rather do something different? Would you rather step into a more enlightened space? I'm assuming you're going with option B. So right now, since it's your show, it's your mind, you're the one who's in charge here. It's your decision. If you've been beating yourself up, hard on yourself, critical on yourself, and that doesn't help, now you can make a decision. Let that go. Could you? Now you might be asking how. It's simple. It's just a yes or no decision right here. Yes or no. Could you let go of beating yourself up? Yes or no. And could you let go of beating yourself up a little bit more? And could you let go of beating yourself up even more? And could you let go of beating yourself up even more? And even more. And even more. And could you let go of criticizing and judging yourself? Judging yourself based on what you've accomplished or not accomplished? Judging yourself based on what you have or don't have? Again, how does that help you? And who's doing the judging? You are. So you can make a decision now. Could you let go of judging yourself so harshly? Yes or no? That's it. Yes or no? Could you let go of judging yourself a little bit more? And a little bit more? And could you let go of being critical towards yourself? And could you let that go even more? And even more. And even more. Just let it go a little bit more. And how does that feel? Nicer, right? Do you feel a little bit lighter? That's what we're looking for. This is showing that you are indeed in charge. Because you're creating a shift right now. You're moving yourself in another direction, a positive direction. Now let's go further. Since positive never hurt anything, now, could you give yourself some love? Even if you don't know why you're here, even if you don't know who you are, even if you feel like the world is crashing down on you and weighing you down and you're powerless, you're a victim, could you love yourself anyway right now? Yes or no? And could you give yourself a little bit more approval? Just because, why not? And could you give yourself a little bit more love and approval? And could you love yourself a little bit more just because you can? And could you love yourself a little bit more? And a little bit more. And even more. And even more. And could you love yourself even more? And even more. And how do you feel about yourself now? Do you feel more relaxed, more open, more free? And what did you do? All you did was make a decision. You made a decision 
to move away from your mind and all that negativity, all that criticism, because that's like 90% of the mind is made of. It's just all criticism and judgment. And when you're listening to that, you're acting out on it. You're looking away from your real purpose, your true self. And see, you are running the show. It's your decision. So when you direct yourself towards love and you start practicing love, you see, the results are fast. Now, could you love yourself even more? And could you love yourself even more? And even more. Could you love yourself even if it's going to take another 10 years to reach your goal? But love yourself enough to stay on track until you see it all the way through. Instead of beating yourself up, getting dejected, giving up, could you love yourself? Could you love yourself a little bit more? And a little bit more. And even more. And even more. And even more. How does that feel? Now, notice the more you exercise this decision to love yourself, your mind gets quieter and quieter. See, the more you practice love, you're being your true self, because that's who you are. You're just pure love, in essence. And when you do that, the mind and the ego has no power against it. It just recedes. It can't stand in the light of your beingness. So just loving yourself shows your mind just fades away. It gets quieter and quieter until eventually it disappears. Now, when you have no mind and you have no desire, like it doesn't matter. To the mind, it feels like, oh, that's not a good place. That's like apathy. No, but when you are mindless, it's a whole different story. You're actually in a very positive place of imperturbability, where it doesn't matter what happens. The whole world can come crashing down around you, and you're happy. And when you're happy, you're focused, you're positive, you could see what it is that you really want, you could see even your worldly goals. But you're not attached to them. You're not driven by them. You're more at ease. And that imperturbability gives you mastership so you can just decide to have that goal. And it's no effort. And that's what I'm going to show you exactly how to do in this upcoming course. If you have any questions about it, don't worry. You're going to experience how to do it. You're going to get really good at this. So talking about imperturbability, just see for yourself how imperturbable you are, whether you get your goals or not. Just imagine never getting any of your goals, never succeeding in life. And how does that sound to you? Now, if you're bothered by that, you're like, ugh, I don't want to go there. That is not being imperturbable. And that is actually what's keeping you stuck in the problem. So try this out right now. Just make a decision. I want imperturbability more than I want my goals, more than I want anything in the world. Just come to that position for a moment. Now, I promise if this doesn't work out, you can always go back to listening to your mind, but just come from this position for a moment. Seriously, I want imperturbability. I value that more then I want to change the situation in my life right now. I'll be in the place where I'm totally happy, 110% happy right now in an imperfect world and all. Now you might feel a challenge coming from your ego. No, you need to push yourself forward. You need to make something of yourself. You need to achieve your goals. That's when you're going to be happy. Well, that's the way you've been living your life. 
most of your life so far. And look at how that's worked out for you. So, instead, right now, go deeper into this decision. I want imperturbability more than I want anything in the world. And if you feel like a resistance or a push from your ego, what I want you to do is just focus on your stomach or chest in this area right here. This is your feeling center. This is where you can really let go of that resistance and you can dissolve that ego in a very easy and practical way here. So close your eyes. Put your head down towards your stomach or chest. And when you think about giving up your pursuit of a wonderful lifestyle, everything in the world, Notice if you have a tightness, a gripping feeling in your stomach or chest. And wherever you feel that, open up an imaginary door or window right in front of that. And that's just energy. Allow that energy. Just imagine it going right on out the door. Open up. Just imagine that energy moving through the door, whatever it looks like to you. It's your choice, however you want to see it. Just imagine it going out the door. And some more. 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 And just open up. Let that leave. Just feel it leaving. Feel it just evaporating out into space here, into beingness. And let it go even more. And a little bit more. Now, when you think about going for imperturbability more than anything in the world, more than realizing your dreams. See if you feel more comfortable with that. Like, oh, no, that's not a big deal. Because this is where happiness is really coming up from. Don't you feel it? Don't you feel that lighter feeling? That's the happiness that's already inside of you. Stop looking for it out there. Look for it in here. All right? So keep practicing this. Keep letting go. And keep checking yourself. Are you really going for imperturbability? Are you really interested on your true purpose? Or are you more interested in the world? If you're more interested in the world, look at what that does to you. It's time to turn that around. Set yourself off in a different direction. All right? So keep practicing this, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.